Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So now that we've moved into our World War II period, uh, we're going to start off with how to easily paint British troops for World War II. So again, as usual, try and get a few reference materials, lots available online. I started mine with just a plain grey base coat, um, just a cheap grey that I got from Super Cheap Auto, I think it was, can't remember the name. Then the British uniforms, I just used a colour called British uniform, pretty straightforward, and covered all of the, as you'd imagine, uniformed areas. Uh, I left the rifles and the helmets and the the blocky areas that are going to be other colours and just went straight for uniform. I find this is just the easiest way. Uh, what I'm trying to do here on this uh, painting stick that I made, I should probably buy buy one, but hey, a lump of wood and an old garden uh, label seems to do the job, so why spend money when you don't need to? Uh, but anyway, on there I've got a British section, and I believe overall it took approximately, including the drying time later on, about one hour and ten minutes for the painting, and then probably about an extra five to ten minutes, well, five minutes to do the flocking, and then probably an extra half an hour to an hour for that to actually dry properly. So overall, you can get a section finished in an hour and a half. Uh, if you wanted to bulk paint even more, you could probably get two sections done in about an hour and a half. So it's quite an effective and efficient way of doing it. Uh, the second colour which I'm doing now is all of the webbing and the helmets with Russian green and that's a Vallejo colour. So these are the, uh, the next largest areas of the miniatures just getting blocked in. I do These miniatures themselves they're Plastic Soldier Company and I do quite like them. Uh, they're quite chunky little guys when you compare them to the German, late war German from Plastic Soldier Company, who are probably actually a closer sort of scale to a, a real human, if that makes any sense, whereas these ones are a bit chunkier. Um, maybe these are more hero scale. But either way, um, I do like painting these, they're quite easy, and there's a good amount of detail all over the figure. So next time I will release a video for the Germans, this is a late war uh, German infantry section that I'll be doing, um, and so slowly but surely over the next few weeks to month I'll be building up uh, two, ga uh, two armies so that I can have some games of bolt action, uh, chain of command or others. Uh, so at this stage we just used khaki just to touch up on the helmets, uh, just the sort of grass and webbing uh, which is on it. And then I use leather brown from Game Color just to do the rifles. I know some people would say you should use a darker brown, but because of the fact that the miniatures are quite small, um, I'm using slightly lighter colors just so that once I put the shading in, um, the wash shading, it actually still stands out. Next we're using black on the boots and on parts of the rifles and machine guns. Yeah, when I first started painting World War II miniatures, well, started painting these uh, Plastic Soldier Company miniatures, I was basing each of them on their own individual bases. Um, Whereas these ones I'm going to try actually putting them on multi-bases, so two or three per base. Um, I'm not sure which way is really better, but it'll be interesting to see. Next I use the flat flesh from Tamiya Color just for the, uh, the skin, all the exposed areas. 
uh, leave a comment below on what your preferred basing is. Do you prefer to have your miniatures one man on one base, or do you prefer to have multiples on a base? Uh, I mean, I can see the perks. I like to remove casualties. When men are killed, I like to take the, the miniature off the table, um, which is why I've always liked individual basing. But I'm also moving towards the slightly large bases. Um, I enjoyed painting the uh, American Civil War and being able to put uh, clump foliage and stuff on the bases and turn them into sort of mini dioramas at the same time. So yeah, interested to hear what you guys think. So that's what they look like now with just the, the base colours blocked in. I think they look pretty reasonable as is. Uh, but the next stage is when we're going to make our black wash. So I like to use a couple of drops of black from game colour and then matte medium and airflow, uh, airbrush flow aid basically, uh, just to go over them all. I quite like this mix because although you've got matte medium, I think the airbrush um, flow improver is actually slightly gloss and so the miniatures come out with still a slight shine, not too much, it's not uh, over the top but on the smaller miniatures just having a little bit of shine I found actually does help to make them look better and so I quite like the outcome. So I've painted these up just as generic uh, infantry. Uh, they would probably be pretty good for British, Canadian, um, most Commonwealth troops. I mean, originally I did come up with an idea of just sort of uh, trying to drill into a specific regiment, uh, but then I thought maybe just go more generic and it opens up more options for, on the table. Although really it doesn't matter. Some people might say it does, but as far as I'm concerned, as long as you've got miniatures on the table, you can play a game. Uh, even if they're painted up as a regiment they didn't fight in that area, does it really matter? I don't think so. It's a game at the end of the day. And if you can't imagine them being something else, well, I guess that's uh, that's your problem. <laughs> so yeah, it took about 10 to 15 minutes for the wash to dry properly uh, before I could then move on to the next step of starting to pick out the highlighting. So again, just touching up on the flesh, just to make it stand out a bit more. followed by silver. Again, like I said earlier, I like to use slightly brighter colours to uh, uh, make the, the smaller miniatures pop. Uh, so I use this just on the metal parts of the rifles and machine guns, and then also on the buckles. And then just to finish them off, I got the Russian green and uh, English uniform and just went over with a light dry brushing just to try and uh, pick out a few of the high points. And overall, I'm pretty happy with the way they come out, uh, as I said before. You've got a good amount of detail, uh, but you don't have to spend ages on it. You could if you wanted to, and you could turn them into little pieces of art. Uh, but for me, I am going for a sort of more massed tabletop effect which you're looking at from a few feet away and doing, or should I say using this process I think has done the uh, trick properly and gets me quick units on the table to play my games. Anyway, thanks for watching today. Uh, I look forward to hearing any comments that you have below, uh, any projects that you want me to work on in the future. And until next time, please like and subscribe and share if you could. And thanks very much.